Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and in the war within beta as well as in alpha, we've seen a ton of different class changes. Some of them receiving a ton of attention and spotlight, like mages, hunters, shamans, death knights, warriors, but then a handful of you have not really been touched as much or given as much attention, and the demon hunter is a class that we haven't talked about it on the channel in quite a long while. With the war within releasing oh so soon, I wanted to double up on this class a little bit and give them a one more look to see how they're holding up. Technically, Demon Hunters did get to see a couple of adjustments over their time in the Alpha and the Beta, but will all these be enough to get players on board and wanting to pick one up for the next upcoming expansion? So I kind of wanted to cumulatively take a look at everything that has happened to this class and then go over exactly how it plays and how everything feels thus far and I pose the question to you, is this going to be enough to make Demon Hunters powerful going forward in the War Within? As always, if you guys want to see more regular class coverage like this in War Within, be sure to follow the channel and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive right in. So what is the overall that has happened to this class over the last few, however long it was that we took a look at this class? I think we initially took a look at them when the hero specs were just revealed. Uh, it was a while ago. I haven't said anything about demon hunter in such a long time so i guess as part of this video i'm gonna go over everything that has happened because their storied history is quite shallow they're not hunters they're not war uh, warlocks they're not shamans they're not mages or death knights or warriors or monks or any of the classes that got a lot of attention for this expansion's development cycle in fact they kind of sit next to the rogues and priests and to some degree druids because even druids even as much as druids got changes like the class challenge tree is still a bit of a mess some classes definitely got a lot of attention for this development cycle and it's been really good to see i've been loving being able to play all these classes and try all these changes and experience them live as we get little gradual updates and they're so much good uh, when it comes to the class changes they've done but demon hunter if you played it in season three of dragonflight or season four of dragonflight essentially it is that just walking into this next expansion with some hero specs involved if you did want to go over like technicality, the general class changes for Demon Hunter, the weakened live by the glaive a little bit instead of giving you 4% heal, it is a 2% heal, not the craziest amount. But besides this, majority of the things that Demon Hunters will get to play around with is with their hero specs. And those have gone through a wide variety of changes. It's been a while since I covered Aldraki and Felsgard, and both of them left me with a bit of like a sour taste in my mouth in terms of just it didn't feel like this is a good move for demon hunters and the class just didn't really see too many changes with some kind of passive ish hero specs but they did get better right they did get better so to cover everything the everything that has happened to all Draki since last time we covered it reaver's mark and this whole mechanic of art of the glaive went through a wide amount of changes so main mechanic of Aldraki is to generate soul shards so fragments as often as like, efficiently as possible for Havoc, this is a little bit harder, so they have a only six soul fragment costs to activate the Reaver's Glaive, which is part of the Art of the Glaive ability. For Vengeance, they generate soul fragments a lot more aggressively. So for them, it's easy pickings. So they have a 20 stack, actually reduced from a 30 soul fragments I had to collect before activating uh, Art of the Glaive to 20 stacks, which does allow them to get this ability more consistently. But Reaver Glaive, once you achieve it, once you get the soul fragments, your next glaive throw is going to be empowered and it is going to ricochet to additional targets and it begins this kind of channel, or not a channel, but like a trance for Demon Hunter, but like a battle trance. The, your next two abilities, Chaos Strike and Blade Dance for Havoc, or Fracture, I guess I could say Shear, but who plays Shear? I'm surprised Fracture is not a baseline ability for Demon Hunters, by the way. When is the last time I ever played non-Fracture builds? But Fracture is what we'll call it, because that's what it is and Soul Cleave, those are the abilities that are part of the synergy for Art of the Glaive for Vengeance. Both of these abilities are enhanced. The second, the first ability by 10%, second by 20, and it never comes with benefits that are AOE focused or single target focused, depending on the order you use those two abilities. So in previous updates for Havoc specifically, you Blade Dance and then you Chaos Strike, you got a single target damage debuff on a target, which increased your overall single target power. Or if you did Chaos Strike Blade Dance, you got a lot more value out of AoE, but it was very one-sided. It was only all big AoE or all single target damage, nothing between. But a Demon Hunter as a class is pretty much in between. A lot of your single target abilities have natural cleave as part of them, but then there's also cooldowns based for those abilities, so you'll use them, and then you'll do single target damage outside of that. So they kind of leaned into that for Aldraki by changing how those abilities work. So 
Blade Dance as part of the rotation is going to cast additional glaives every time you press it. Those glaives, however, that are going to be used during Blade Dance as part of this combo will be doubled if you use the Chaos Strike ability, then Blade Dance, leaning the Reaver ability into more AoE components. So you'll basically always get the baseline benefit of three glaives from your Blade Dance, but you can get three additional ones if you go a little more AoE heavy. This allows you to maintain some single target value from Reaper's Mark uh, for uh, Chaos Strike, but even if you go more single target heavy, just the blade dance will at least give you additional glaive slashes either way. So it bakes an AoE, even if you want to focus in on single target. But the single target component is Reaver's Mark. Whenever you Chaos Strike as part of this combo, you apply a debuff to the target at 7% value, but also can stack up to two times, called Reaver's Mark, make an enemy mistake, 7% more damage for 20 seconds. So if you're using this in single target, where your Chaos Strike is a second ability, so blade dance then Chaos Strike, you get two stacks of Reaver's Mark amp it to 14%, but still get the benefit of the Blade Dance AoE. If you use Chaos Strike first, then your Blade Dance to get more AoE value, you still get even one stack of Reaver's Mark, so you get some single target value, even if you're trying to AoE. How cool is that? It's really neat. It's I probably did the worst job explaining this ability, but you get what I mean. Like It just allows you to empower both of these abilities, and the single target component or the AOE component grows more powerful if it's the second ability in that rotation, but it still means you get a partial single target, partial AOE component, no matter what you do with it. So that's really, really cool. They did end up nerfing Eldraki Reaver quite a bit because as a hero spec, it is the more preferred playstyle, and we'll talk about that in terms of its gameplay in a little bit. But for most human hunters, it is the preferred choice. It is better on single target, and it's been quite ahead of Felsgard for a good bit of while. So they nerfed Eldraki in multiple different ways. Like Reaver's Mark, the damage window used to be like 15% or 30% if you doubled it, or 25% or 20 or something like that. Those numbers have been down downgraded to 7% and 40% maximum if you get two stacks of this ability so that's a little bit unforged but i mean a drug has been ahead also incisive blade this number apparently went down by quite a bit i was trying to find out what the number used to be before i i couldn't find it but it's now all i saw is a blue post saying it's been reduced down to 10 percent it doesn't really say what it was previously which is unfortunate also through all the fight when you consume both enhancements after using the Reaver's Glaive ability, Chaos Strike or Blade Dance, you gain the buff of Thrill of the Fight, giving you auto attack speed buff for 20 seconds and a damage or a healing window by 20% for 10 seconds. So this one is used to be, I think, tied to your next ability deals additional damage instead of just a raw damage buff. It's been downgraded to a raw damage buff, but also the max damage that it applied for an ability has been lowered from like 30% to 20% or maybe it was higher, but now it's down to 20% damage buff for healing buff, which is still very strong, but it has been reduced compared to what it was previously. Now, after playing around with Eldraki Reaver, it is going to be interesting to see how players end up approaching this one, because for the most part, it is a very powerful choice on single target, and it is the preferred choice when it comes to early array testing. Even after the nerves that Eldraki Reaver kept seeing again and again and again, it still was the preferred option. But now it's even more made more flexible, has a bit of AoE and single target components tied into it together, so it can be pretty fun from that damage regard. For Vengeance Demon Hunters in particular, Eldraki is a very popular pick because it's super defensive. There's some awesome defensive options like passive damage reduction or additional healing and overall tanky wise this one is a little bit stronger and i've been seeing a lot more play of eldraki than felscard when it comes to logs doesn't mean the felscard is bad there are good parts about it but there is definitely a shift for most demon hunters that are eldraki havoc mostly eldraki vengeance mostly eldraki felscard gotten buffs after buffs after buffs for multiple weeks and it still it seems like a lot of players are still leaning towards eldraki However, though, Eldraki does give you this whole glaive mechanic and you have to use one ability then the next or whatever as part of your combo. That is going to be a little bit heavy, especially for the spec like a Havoc Demon Hunter. Now, Havoc Demon Hunters normally play around Inertia and Momentum. And I'm going to assume that both of these effects, one or the other, is still going to be the preferred choice for raiding content. And if you're trying to output the maximum amount of damage in AoE content. That being said, however... A lot of recent logs of Havoc Demon Hunters have dropped the momentum or the movement window completely. Not, some are not even picking up Tactical Retreat, but some are switching out between Blind Flurry and that. Either one works. I tried both and doesn't really seem to make too much of a difference. But yeah, it looks like if you're playing Eldraki, a lot of the recent logs are dropping the movement aspects 
so they could focus on the Reaver's Glaive, I'm assuming, a little bit more evenly. Because you do have to track this ability. And with Demon Hunters, you're already attracting a lot of little micro buffs here and there. Like the Inertia Window, like the little Burst Window of Essence Break, the short moment uh, duration of your I-Beam whenever you, well, Demotic, or rather Metamorphosis once I-Beam finishes the small burst window of initiative so then you have it to track in now art of the glaive and that little combo that you have to utilize as part of this little rotation i can see how white some demon hunters may want to switch out like okay let's remove some complexity on my spec just a little bit uh and then replace it with aldraki but now this is mostly in a um a mythic plus kind of thing again in raids i would assume that inertia and momentum are still going to be heavily incentivized especially if you're trying to get the most amount of raw damage but it's going to be a lot of things you got to manage that's an extra week or a, you got to track just to make keep up with the uh reaper's reaper's glade that is another little burst window that you now have to integrate as part of your burst combo so it is going to be a lot to deal with plus for having demon hunters it can also play around with a bit of rng you don't always generate soul fragments consistently now, Reaver's Glaive, you can't get it guaranteed whenever you use the Hunt. So it gives you a guaranteed Reaver's Glaive in your opener. And then Demon Hunter started playing around with things such as Sigil of Spite in order to spawn more or less Soul Fragments to get the effect of Reaver's Glaive more consistently. But even playing with it, there are times when it's proccing a lot and times when it's not proccing when I have my cooldowns, but I'm not going to wait for Reaver's Glaive to send everything. So sometimes you do have this ability kind of waning in and out, or weaving in and out in terms of effectiveness. So that is something that's going to be noticeable. So complexity aside, RNG aside, extra tracking aside, it is a powerful playstyle. It is a very, very strong one. And I actually enjoyed playing it without the no mover build, trying some of the newer stuff. Definitely give this one a go to see if maybe this will play better with Aldraki. We don't have the final tuning of Demon Hunter at all whatsoever, but if this is how it ended up being, I actually wouldn't hate Aldraki Reaver that much. That being said, you are most likely going to play the more complex version of Demon Hunter. And so it's awesome when it comes to skill expression, but the learning curve to play this and incorporate Aldraki a little bit could be interesting to see how most players will end up approaching it that being said we talked a lot about aldraki but felsgard i mean it is there's a lot to say one incredibly fun two incredibly flavorful for the class of demon hunter it's all about empowering that metamorphosis window and it's passive and it's easy to play into and it really amps up a lot of your abilities so you do quite a lot of additional damage i mean Demon Surge is an ability you can do quite a bit, and they buffed this one across the board, but some way, somehow, Felsgard still fails to capture the goodness of what he can offer to a lot of Demon Hunters, and most players say that numerically is just still not significant enough. And you should see some of the damage buffs he's gotten. The main Demon Surge ability, when you pop out a Metamorphosis, your abilities are now modified with this Demon Surge effect, their stronger version of those, and when you use those abilities, you explode in fire damage called Demon Surge. This Demon Surge got buffed up by 80% at some point, just to make sure that it's as strong as it can be. Focus Hatred allows it to be 50%, this also got buffed up from 30% to or 35% to 50% stronger in pure single target because that's where Felsco really is behind. But the ability does have a combo where it's actually just exploding for full damage to all nearby targets. There's no soft cap. It's uncapped AoE. How many abilities do you know in the game right now that are fully uncapped AoE? There's like a handful of them. So this one, in a huge, big, massive pool scenario where there's a lot of targets, you just can explode at all of them with no downgrade whatsoever. It is good, though not always you're going to be running into packs where you can really get the most out of Demon Surge. But... Even with the damage boss like Focus Hatred, the damage of it, yeah, it's still a little... It's still a little all over the place. Things such as Burning Blades went from a 50% damage buff to up to 60 at some point, then went back down to 35. But yeah, this is like some nice bit of extra passive fire damage that you were able to do. So for both Demon Hunters, especially for Havoc, if you can play around the... Uh, your aim is necessary, that's a must-have at this point with that one. Um, then we have things such as Enduring Torment. This got better a little bit for both Demon Hunters, but primarily for Havoc, where the uh, the damage of your Chaos Strike and Blade Dance, as well as your Haste, has increased by quite a bit whenever you're in your weakened state, whenever you're not in your full Metamorphosis form. And I like that little, you know, the the little <laughs> flavor, flavor, flavorful thing of like, you're in a weakened state, you're not at your full potential, but here's a little buff so while it, until you get back into your true form. It is kind of... I like it. Then also mastery buffs from 
student of suffering this got buffed up by quite a bit so your mastery has been increased by a tremendous amount uh, from what i see is about like a 50 percent compared to what it used to be so this one is very very noticeable gives you a big burst window within eight seconds plus there's ways for you to reset sigil of flame pretty regularly with meta so that also becomes very very interesting as well monster rising also grants you additional agility as well outside of your main form is eight percent for both specs so to try to buff up felscourt as much as it humanly could and the play style is really really fun but it, it's it's first of all flavor it's it has it in spades it's more flavorful than a draki which throws a glaive once in a while being able to amp up your demon form and playing around demon form is essentially the whole point of playing a demon hunter it is fun it is active it is fast paced it integrates itself into your rotation abilities easily it does make you adjust your buttons a little bit more like um going for your opener with the um essence break blade dance you backflip out with ventral tree during that and then you meta back in for another blade dance this one is a little different because you can't when you place metamorphosis both chaos strike and blade dance get amplified by demon surge ability so i wonder if you'll end up eye beaming then presses break chaos strike blade dance leap away meta back in chaos strike last second just so you can get the most amount of value out of demon surge so you're not wasting any charges so that's going to be a little bit it kind of threw me off a little bit doing it but numerically this one is um not great that's the only thing that really holds the fasco right now is numerically it just hasn't really been able to keep up with Aldraki. They keep nerfing Aldraki again and again and again. But False Guard, it is fun. And at moments, it can be really, really cool. It just lacks the it factor when it comes to its damage. I really would have loved to see Demon Surge ability do maybe a little bit more in pure single target. Another thing that really holds False Guard is for Vengeance Demon Hunters. We don't see a lot of them playing it. And from what I've seen and what I've read and what I've been talked to about is Felsguard is not as good defensively. Now, when you do play Vengeance as Felsguard, there is a couple of defensive components, not as good as the raw healing, 20% more healing as you would get with the uh, Aldraki, but you do have things such as Enduring Torment. Their version grants them 5% more health and 20% more armor when they're in their weakened state. So you would think the armor, after all these global take doors, would be really, really nice, but it's just not enough. And then you do you can get a bit more master which can provide you a bit extra defense the uh, raw damage you do can also do a little bit of extra healing for you and then maybe things like wave of delimitation can be used to like debuff enemies after a stun that can be used in maybe mythic plus situations but defensively just hasn't really been as good as Aldraki. and Aldraki has some components of self-healing or immediate defenses whenever you fell blade so that can be really nice for raw physical damage reduction or just raw damage reduction in general the self-healing component with throw of the fight is also really really good the extra souls that you can generate pretty regularly while Aldraki is also really nice in that regard as well yeah Felsgar just hasn't really been able to um compete in that same way now, as for the actual specs of Demon Hunter, there isn't really much to talk about. I mean, Havoc, it saw an ability damage buff of 13%, which is pretty awesome. Damage buff is nice. An eye beam damage uh, increased by 100%, also very welcome. Fire inside getting a slightly more chance for you to proc, like from going from a 25% chance to refund the charge of immolation to use again up to 30%. So you can get some really decent like rage fire windows. That can be really fun, but yeah, you are really walking into this expansion not feeling any different. And Aldraki Reaver simply just gives you like an extra hope to jump through. And then False Guard is very, very passive. So if there's definitely a point of enjoyment with this class in terms of I don't get to play it too often. So for me, playing around Havoc and having to be more familiar to what I play with, with Dragonflight, it is nice to hop back on and play for a bit. But looking at it from like a rogue perspective, like watching my class of rogue not really going through a lot of changes where there's a lot of potential where they could make things better or fix things or add a bit of addition to gameplay or change the problems. Havoc Demon Hunter is essentially walking in with everything, bells and whistles into this expansion, but now you have a bit extra few talents to play into. And they're kind of cool talents, but I a lot of the Demon Hunters wanted to see a bit more variety and a little bit something new, something fresh out of the class that just isn't quite there if you played it previously. As for Havoc Demon Hunters, they're seeing a essentially a very, very similar thing. They didn't really get a lot of changes. They were walking in about the same. They did get an ability damage buff, all tanks did, by 15%, so Vengeance does hit a little bit harder. The damage it can do is uh, significantly a little better overall, 
which is nice. This is something we want to see in our tanks. Avengers being a very aggressive tank, I think there's potential for them to do some really, really nasty pulls. Tanks did get a global nerf, and Vengeance also got hit by a global nerf through very little things, like a slight stamina decrease or damage reduction decrease here and there, a little bit less parry from certain abilities such as illuminated sigils, parry chance to reduce a bit, less self-healing from a lot of your different healing sources such as... Uh, for example, the uh, frailty, the healing component, yeah, all that, uh, the whole, I guess the whole row of like vulnerability and soul crush and all these things also got hit all together, but the main component frailty did get affected. You have also a little bit less health whenever you press metamorphosis too, so just little things here and there, nothing to really write home about, but that's no different than any other tank. In terms of vengeance getting an actual play in, in Myth Plus, at least on a beta, they are quite popular. It's hard to tell which tank is the most popular pick by measure. I think you, you only the only tank you don't really ever see in any dungeons is Protection Paladin. Besides this, you see plenty of prop warriors, you see plenty of bear druids, brewmaster monks, vengeance, demon hunters, and blood death knights, which is really, really good to see. And maybe, if the tuning is right, maybe we could have some tank variety in the first season of War Within. I think I would really love to see that. Vengeance, otherwise, I think would have been a pretty dominant option because they do have quite a bit of self healing, where blood death knights don't no longer, I feel like, have the economy on the most amount of self healing possible. Um, Vengeance could have been a really, really good choice if they still kept the double sigils with limited sigils. One of the things they did, though, throughout the beta cycle is they removed the ability for them to double up on your sigil of silence. For CC, Sigil of Misery for the Fear, so Silence right here, Fear right here, or Misery, which is the Fear effect. Then there's the Chains for even more pull. So the only Sigil you have double of right now is your Sigil of Flame. So if you want to get those set up, damage-wise, resource-wise, parry-wise, it's pretty good there, but that's about it. So the does cut down on the control that they used to have, making all the tanks a little bit more even, and it does make me wonder where Vengeance is going to end up. Like I said, in the beta, it does seem like everybody except for like Prop Paladin are a bit more even when it comes to tank representation. You see a lot of different classes in general on the beta, which is really good to see. I think maybe if anything, you see a lot of Aug Evokers, those are still very popular. But in terms of like healers, non Aug Evoker DPS and tanks, I feel like there's quite a bit of variety. You don't see the same classes over and over and over, at least from my experience over in the beta. And maybe this is indicative to what the season one is going to be like, which would be awesome. I'd love to see some variety, something new, something different, and someone new to play with. I'm sure someone will figure out what is the most meta pick for pushing, and that'll kind of stay uh, set everybody in the community to like play certain classes and meta. But we're really hoping that we walk out into the season one of War Within with a bit of variety. But yeah, Vengeance Demon Hunter definitely not held back by a lot of these changes. They could have had a monopoly on crowd control, which would have definitely given them an advantage. But after that, it's still hard to see. Although in terms of overall class feel, it's very fun. Just very hard to gauge how well they're going to be in the overall meta. But with that being said, I do want to pass it up to you guys in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on the class of Demon Hunter? And how do you think it's going to end up in War Within? And what do you think the class really needed for the development of the War Within? This is a question I really love asking priest players, rogue players, even druids, but what do you think Demon Hunters really needed in order to give them that it factor to make them like the go-to or your go-to choice for like, yes, definitely main in this class going into the next expansion? Let me know all those thoughts in the comments down below. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very, very much appreciate it. Join our Discord community, link to that in the description of every single one of the videos. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.